All right, picking up where we left off, let's consider the polar curve given. Let's find the slope of the curve at the point where theta equals pi over 4. So uh, we need to find the slope. So dy dx. Okay, so we have our work cut out for us. So in the numerator, we're going to differentiate with respect to theta, the y equation. And likewise, in the bottom, the x equation. Ooh, my fraction bar is too big. Okay, so actually, I think I'm going to come down here. Hopefully, it'll stick right here. So in the numerator, y is going to be replaced with r sine theta. Okay, where R is the given polar equation. Then in the denominator, we're differentiating the X equation, which um, X from above is R times cosine of theta. So here's R, and we're going to multiply that by cosine of theta. So we're going to have to do the product rule in the numerator and the denominator. So you might want to turn off the video, check this out, uh, you know, come back and check it out, see how you did. First times the derivative of the second plus the second factor times the derivative of the first. And notice you're going to have to apply the chain rule to that first factor. Uh, derivative of sine theta is going to be 3 cosine 3 theta and 3 times the current 2 is going to be 6 cosine 3 theta. So hopefully yours is all staying put on your paper. Okay, and in the denominator also, product rule. Okay, when I differentiate cosine, I'm going to get negative sine. I'll just put the negative in front so I don't think that it's a subtraction. plus the second factor, which is cosine of theta, times the derivative of the first, which we already have, 6 cosine 3 theta. Okay. Now, uh, just bear in mind, you're not canceling anything. You can't cancel terms in a quotient, so we just actually have to plug in theta pi over 4 for each theta and evaluate. And maybe something nice will happen. All right, so the next thing is to plug in pi over 4 everywhere you see theta. So 2 sine of 3 pi over 4, that's the y coordinate over there in second quadrant, so that's going to be square root of 2 over 2. Okay. And you have on your paper cosine of pi over 4, etc. Now the cosine of, oh well, cosine of pi over 4 is also square root of 2 over 2 because we're in quadrant 1. Just looking at something else. Okay, sorry it's disappearing, but I know it's there on your paper. So 6 times the cosine of 3 pi over 4. Remember, in the second quadrant, the cosine is going to be negative, so that would produce a negative value there. So denominator 2 sine of 3 pi over 4. I think this denominator is sine of pi over 4, or that factor, plus the cosine of pi over 4. times 6 cosine of 3 pi over 4. Mm -mm. Now it's going to act, act funny. So in the numerator, I have 2 times the square root of 2 over 2 and then also another square root of 2 over 2 plus square root of 2 over 2 and then I pulled out the 6 and evaluated the trig part and got negative square root of 2 over 2. In the denominator we started off with a negative. Oh there for a minute I thought it was going to stay. So we had negative 2 square root of 2 over 2 another square root of 2 over 2 and then we had a 
plus, I guess, in the denominator 2. This was square root of 2 over 2. This was 6. I pulled the 6 out. And then negative square root of 2 over 2. Okay, and cleaning it up a little bit. Eventually, I got to 1 plus 6 times negative 2 fourths. And negative 1 plus 6 times negative 2 fourths. And that cleaned up to 1 minus 3 on top and negative 1 minus 3 on bottom. And completing the calculations, I, I had a half. Okay, and uh, just as a visual, if you wanted to, you could put your calculator in polar mode. You could graph the given polar equation. Okay, and you can kind of eyeball where the, the um, angle is pi over 4 and see if you have a positive rate of change there. See if the slope of the gr graph at pi over 4 is positive, and it should be. All right, thanks for hanging in there. I don't know why it's behaving so badly and why it started to behave okay here. All right, let's go to clip note uh, 25. All right, the other requirement of College Board for polar regions is to find, find the area. All right, so we have the formula given here. Question number one, find the area inside the curve of, and we're given a polar equation, and we're given an interval. Well, it's not, it's not going to get any easier than that. I think the intent of this question is, do you know what the formula is? So if this question appeared um, on what, an exam, I'm, I'm going to be thinking that what they're trying to do is test to make sure that I've memorized the area formula um, for a polar graph. So our limits are going to go from alpha to beta, so that would be 0 to pi. And we just square the given um, polar equation. in terms of theta, d theta. And that would likely be a calculator question. Yeah, it'd probably be, yeah, that would be a calculator question. All right, let's look at number two. It's multiple choice. Uh, not that these are doing us any good that you're looking at, but you're looking at them on, on, in your book. All right, so it tells us the area of the region bounded by the polar graph of, and it gave it to us, is given by the integral. Okay, um, my concern with this question is I think they would present you with a graph too. Um, for this particular problem, without a graph, it's going to be very challenging to find your lower and your upper limit. I mean, you could set the equation equal to zero, um, but something interesting results actually. If you were to set this equation equal to zero, attempt it, square both sides, you're going to get a false statement. You're going to get cosine of theta is negative three. So there's nothing revealed to us about our lower and upper limits with regard to this equation. So I feel certain that they would provide a graph as well. So that's what I'm going to do. And from our graph, we should be able to make the appropriate choice. You can type this into your um, equation when you're in polar mode. Oh. All right, it doesn't like it down here. Let me see if I can put it here. It doesn't like it down there either. Maybe over here. <laughs> okay. Not so much. I'll try and get it on here. Okay, it's going to look something like this. Well, that's all right. You have your calculator. You guys can kind of figure it out. It's, it's not really circular, okay, but it does take on the shape of like an oval. All right, so we can see from this picture right here that um, in order for us to produce an entire um, graph like this, we're going to have to go from zero as a lower limit all the way past pi to two pi. We need to do one complete rotation in order for us to sketch out this region. So that indicates to me that my limits are going to be from zero to 2 pi. And remember, we have the half in front. And then I'm going to square the square root. Okay, and so that was 3 plus cosine theta, d theta. Okay, so if you've got that written down, I don't know why mine keeps moving, but if I were to square that integrand, then the square root comes off. The problem is, when I look at the choices, I don't have anything that fits a half and 0 to 2 pi. Study the limits study the limits of the given integrals and I think you can see that if I made an adjustment and if I were to just integrate from 0 to pi and double that, that I would get the entire area. There's, there's symmetry with regard to the x-axis. 
So in that case, what if I stopped at pi, put pi here, well then I'd have to double that value um, to get the actual area. So that would undo the half. So my answer is just going to be the limits from 0 to pi with no square root in the integrand and no coefficient in front. So the correct choice was E. Now let's take a look at number three. All right, let's see if we can get a graph of this problem situation. <clears throat> we have a cardioid and a circle. Okay, draw on the cardioid. Okay, we, I'm just looking at the structure here. It's cosine, it's negative cosine, so the, the body, if you will, or the major part of this heart is going to be sy symmetric with regard to the negative x-axis. Okay, so the heart's going to be laying on its side. This will go up to 4, but yet the heart stretches out over here to 8, goes down to negative 4, and stretches back here. Ooh, not too bad. All right, and so then we need to also draw the circle R equals 6. Okay, so if the radius is 6, and I knew that this was 4 and this was negative 4, it kind of gives me direction as how to draw it. And then I also know that this is negative 8, so for my circle centered at the origin with the radius of 6, it's going to come around this way. My radius of 6 here. Again, this is negative 4, so the circle is going to pass 2 below that and then cut through here. All right. So find the area of the region that is inside the heart but outside of the circle. So we're talking about this area right here. So to get our plan, it's important to know where the points of intersections are. If you think about the angle that's associated with those, okay, it appears to be 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Well, how can we be certain? We'll take the two equations, set them equal, and see what results. Okay, and so on the unit circle, find where the angles are, um, have x coordinates of negative one half, and that's going to be at 2 pi over 3 and also at 4 pi over 3. So now it looks like we might have some limits to be to work with. Okay, I think our plan for this would be maybe to find the area in half of the region and then double it. Uh, since we have symmetry with regard to the x-axis, if I just found the area right here in this little top section in quadrant two, okay, then I can take and double that and have my answer. So our plan is this. Let's find the area that's in the cardioid from 2 pi over 3 to pi. So if I took and I swung this ray down and I got to pi from 2 pi over 3 to pi, I would capture all of the area in the cardioid right in here. And then we're going to go back and subtract okay, the area that's in the circle just up until the circle right here. So we're going to do a, a subtraction of two integrals. All right, so we're finding the area in the cardioid from pi, uh, 2 pi over 3 to pi, and that's going to give us too much area. So from 2 pi over 3 to pi, cardioid is 4 minus 4 cosine theta quantity squared d theta. That's too much. I need to go back and subtract this area right in here in the circle. You could collapse this and combine it into one integral if you wanted to. Okay, and then you're just gonna, I'm just going to square the 6. That's the radius of the second equation. And as I said, you could combine this all into um, one integral if you wanted to, because we have the same limit, so that's perfectly acceptable. Now that's just going to give you half of the area that's outside of the cardioid, or inside the cardioid, outside of the circle. So what you need to do is double that. So if you brought in a multiplier of 2, okay, it just is going to reduce down to this integral right here. And I'm going to go ahead and collapse it into 1.
Okay, so that's a setup. So go to your calculator, enter that equation into y1, find the area, and this is what I got.